Hey carnivores, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you all are having a Gouda meat fuel day. If you are currently carnivore or you are looking to start the carnivore diet, I am sure you have come across people, family, friends, doctors, articles telling you that the carnivore diet is dangerous. In this video, I go through the top six carnivore diet dangers. And to help me reassure you all and provide ample evidence to defend yourselves out in the real world, I have invited my friend Joey Schwartz, also known as the Carnivore Camaraderie. Joey, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. How are you? I'm great. Well, firstly, introduce yourself to the audience. How did you find the carnivore diet? Yeah, so I'll run through that pretty quick. Um, I'm Joey. I'm 19 now. I found carnivore about a year ago, you could say. I was getting into weightlifting and trying to get stronger and quickly realized how important of a component diet played in that. And so I'm starting to sort of realize that, um, you know, carbohydrates and eating bananas and whey protein wasn't working for me. I was getting terrible breakouts in my skin. I felt lethargic all the time. And I cut out vegetables and after going keto, cut out vegetables, did meat and fruit for six months which was great because I didn't eat vegetables anymore. And that, the vegetables were the real killer for me. But then when I went carnivore, I just experienced even more benefits. And I've just been learning more, spent tons of hundreds, maybe thousands of hours just researching, trying to understand why this works. Wow. And yeah, so I'm just excited to talk about that. Yeah. And what I really love Joey for and all of his channel videos is that he is so confident. He is not afraid to bust <laughs> myths. He is not yeah. afraid to debate at all. Today, we'll be busting a bunch of popular myths that have been thrown at our face over and over and over. I will just read each one to you, and we can just discuss and bust it together. Cool. Carnivore diet provides zero fiber, so that means meat rots in the stomach. Yeah. Well, the thing is, meat doesn't rot in the stomach. So what happens is 97 to like 99% of meat is actually absorbed in the small intestine before it even reaches the colon. So a lot of people say, well, you know, you eat these zero carb diets and you have tons of this buildup in your colon. Well, it's like, no, it's all absorbed in the small intestine. It's pure nutrition. We use it all. And then after that, we excrete the rest, which is why people have such small amounts of poop on the carnivore diet relative to a vegan diet or um, a more plant-based diet where you're eating tons of fiber and therefore you're working your bowels more. And also there's no benefit to pooping all the time. Like yeah. having to rest, having to constantly work your bowels, um, is just a, a recipe for disaster. It's, it's really not a good idea. And the idea that fiber is good for somehow relieving constipation is also absurd. It, the idea that it's good for passing things through is crazy because it, fiber gets stuck. They yeah. actually did this study where they either kept them on the same amounts of fiber, reduced their fiber, or mm -hmm. gave them zero fiber at all. And the only group that had complete relief of their constipation was a group with zero fiber. Taking out fiber makes things work smoother. Meat does not rot in your colon. That's, um, that is a myth that can be dispelled very easily. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And let's use our carnivore experience, our experience with eating fiber, then not eating fiber. For me, I feel like I have a good representation of fiber life and zero fiber life. When I was vegan, all I ate was fiber. And I would have a Buddha belly every single day. I would be bloated. I would have digestion problems. And yet I would be pooping like twice a day, but my stomach would always be huge. And then I go to carnivore and I'm eating zero fiber. And I notice where did the bloat go? <laughs> like, why is my stomach always so flat? So for me, that says everything. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point. We can just use our own experiences and say, yeah. well, do we feel bloated? Do we feel gassy? Do we feel gross? Do we feel like we're constipated? Yeah. Well, no. And what do we do? Well, we took out the fiber. So how mm -hmm. could it be that fiber is causing the problem when removing it was a solution? Exactly. Moving on to the second myth, you will not get a healthy microbiome because you're not eating variety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the microbiome is overrated. Um, the microbiome is just a reflection of what you eat. So the like the more diverse foods you eat, you're gonna have a more diverse microbiome. Mm. Who's to say that having more diversity in your microbiome is going to cause better health? The people who are eating a wide range of plant foods, hundreds of different plant foods and vegetables and fruits, they might have a more diverse microbiome because they're eating more different types of things. It, it would make sense that it's correlated with health 
because it's those people eating all the fruits and vegetables that are also probably exercising, getting outside, higher socioeconomic status and so forth. But there's no evidence that having the more gut microbiome diversity is going to be beneficial. And here's the other thing, like the Maasai, for example, their microbiomes have been studied extensively. They eat meat, drink blood, drink milk from the animals that they have. Mm -hmm. Their microbiomes are perfectly healthy. And also the microbiome is not a reflection of your gut integrity, like the gut lining. So you can have a really diverse microbiome, as far as I know, and you can have an extremely messed up gut. And that's what matters more. Not having a leaky gut is not having a tons, tons of different microbes in there. That, that doesn't really matter. Also, yeah. there's been like, there's a lot of flaws with this whole microbiome hypothesis. The mm. Hadza, they're another hunter-gatherer group that eats lots of meat and fruit and stuff. Mm. And they, like their, their microbiomes were studied. And the hypothesis was that if they don't, the hypothesis is if you don't have certain types of bacteria that you're going to be unhealthy. Mm -hmm. What they found was that in this group, they didn't have certain types of bacteria and yet they were perfectly healthy and didn't have the diseases that were supposedly associated with not having the bacteria. So it's, it's, it's a really messed up hypothesis. Um, I think carnivores, I know carnivores have perfectly healthy microbiomes. I would say the keywords that you shared is uh, having biodiversity does not equal better health doesn't yeah. necessarily, right? right? Have you heard of the saying, your gut or your stomach is like a second brain? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And for me, I again, let's go back to our experience. Uh, when I was eating all of the colors, right? All of the rainbow, I didn't feel like my skin was showing that it was happy. I didn't mm. feel like my brain fog was, you know, getting any better. And then when you cut out all of that, you know, the poison and the plants and the carbs, and just focus on eating actual nutrient dense animal meats and foods, I suddenly felt like I was superhuman, like I was performing at my absolute best. Did you feel mental clarity and mental improvements? I did. And that's all definitely a partial uh, reflection of the gut health, for sure. Um, it's not it goes beyond like there's a lot of evidence that eating meat and lots of fat and not no plants is beneficial for the actual brain chemistry. But there's also good evidence that the gut is significantly affecting the way that our brain functions, the way that we feel, mm -hmm. levels of brain fog. So if you have a leaky gut and we're leaking stuff mm -hmm. um, past the gut lining, so molecular mimicry happens and the immune system basically attacks itself, right? And we're inflamed. That's not going to be good for brain fog either. So it's definitely, yeah, it definitely makes sense that our higher level of health is also caused by a healthier gut, which doesn't mean, doesn't have to mean more microbiome diversity. Fantastic. Let's move on to the third myth. Carnivore diet does not give you any vitamin C. Mm. Yeah. So vitamin C is very important. It is a water soluble vitamin um, and vitamin C is in meat. So we know that vitamin C is in meat uh, without question. It's, yes. it's in not only liver, which people like to talk about, oh, you only get vitamin C from liver. It's an all muscle meat. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the thing is, vitamin C is water soluble, as I said, and water soluble vitamins are very sensitive to heat. So which is why I like to not cook overcook my meat, just for the sake of being safe. Yes. Um, water, water soluble vitamins, like including B vitamins and stuff are severely denatured by heat. So if there's no like red or rawish parts of the meat, that means there's probably no vitamin C in there. So, um, yeah, and, and but there's, there's also reasons why we need less vitamin C. So to say that, I think the recommendation is like 90 milligrams or something. We don't need that. We could do like 10. We could we could even do less than that, probably. And right. the reason why we can do less is because vitamin C is moved around by the GLUT4 receptor and it competes with glucose for transport to the cell. So yes. if we're eating a bunch of glucose, a bunch of sugar, then there's going to be less vitamin C absorbed because it's competing with the glucose for transport to the cell. So if we're not eating glucose, which we're not on carnivore, mm -hmm. that vitamin C goes right in. Like that vitamin C is used. And um, like a lot of people have given criticism criticism to this. It's like, oh, this is just a crazy theory, mechanistic speculation that we need less yeah. vitamin C on a carnivore diet. But the thing is, we see it in application and we see it in the real world. Like the Inuit didn't have vitamin C deficiencies. You and I don't have vitamin C deficiencies. Nope. The Maasai don't have vitamin C deficiencies. So like it would be one thing to say it's just a crazy theory, but we see it working in application. Nobody gets scurvy on carnivore. Right. Um, scurvy, yeah, and the, something else that they would say is like, yes, oh, oh, see, they, they would say, oh, scurvy is um scurvy was caused by the people 
uh, on the ships who ate only dried meat. Mm-hmm. They were eating bread. They only ate bread. They they and, and the people below deck who had more money were eating dried meat, and they were the ones who got vitamin C and didn't get screwy. So mm-hmm. it's a very yeah, just a, a a myth that's not grounded in any logic or science that people in carnivore don't get vitamin C. And I would like to know what your thoughts on the gristle of meat giving vitamin C is. So I've heard every time I bring up the vitamin C topic and I say, you actually don't need as much vitamin C on the carnivore diet because everything is absorbed. Basically what you stated. I also got a lot of uh, insight saying it's the gristle that you want to eat. Like when you eat the ribeye or New York strip, the part where it's difficult to chew, that is the part where vitamin C is. Have you heard of that? Mm, that would make sense. Yeah. Like um, like maybe more the collagen rich areas, stuff like right. that. And I try to eat a lot of those food. That's another actually good thing to really quickly touch on. Yes. Those that parts of the meat, like the, the animal is filled with lots of collagen rich areas, like near the bones. There's mm-hmm. all that collagen stuff. We're eating a lot of ground beef, which is fine. It's fine, but we should be eating a lot of parts that are have that collagen rich stuff near the bone so we can get an even distribution of the whole animal. Yeah. So eating things like ribs, short I love short ribs. I know I know you like them too. They're yeah, my favorite. Yeah, my they're favorite. great. Yeah, but like th- those collagen rich parts of the animal yes. are very important to eat in my opinion just because so we get a full the full um like re- accurate representation of what what uh, eating a whole cow would be like. And since Joey mentioned short ribs, how can I not give you guys more details about this beautiful cut of beef? I always get my flanken sliced short ribs from Costco. They're currently $9.99 per pound, but I always see it on sale at local grocery stores as well, as low as $6.99 per pound. Flanken short ribs are delicious, especially if you want something new. If you're sick of your good old ribeye, steaks, ground beef patties, check this out. It's beautiful finger food, super fatty, and that collagen near each of those bones are excellent for the vitamin C. Absolutely. Nose to tail. The collagen is often forgotten. I also love oxtail. You can turn it into a delicious fatty soup. And that crunchy collagen part is my favorite. So don't forget about that piece and that will give you your vitamin C for sure. Next myth, too much salt which carnivores eat a lot of, will cause high blood pressure and then heart attack. Yeah, so here's the theory, right? The theory is that sodium pulls fluid from the tissues and into the blood, and then this increase in the blood volume causes the heart to work harder, and then thus yielding high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Is this true? Probably not. Actually, it's very unlikely that it's true, and here's why. So, in the fifth, like we can actually look at the history of salt to figure out if it makes sense that eating more salt would cause high blood pressure. So we can just look yeah. at that. So in like the 1500s, they were eating 400 to 100 grams of salt a day. Mm. Like like they're, they're eating the salted fish. There was no there was no uh, refrigeration, so they're eating tons of salted fish, salted pieces of meat. There was no hypertension back then. Like there really wasn't. Um, early 1800s to I think like the end of World War II, they're eating 15 to 17 grams of salt per day. So the, it, it's tons of salt because refrigeration, again, is not big. Like you don't have another option but to salt the food and preserve it. Yes. And um, yeah. And so today, funny enough, we have over three times as much hypertension as we did in the early 1900s. Right. And yet salt consumption is like they recommend, I think, 2.9 grams, like grams. We were eating 14 to 17 from the 1800s to the end of World War II. Right. So we're eating way more salt than we, than we are now. Right. And yet we have way, we're way more hypertensive. The American Heart Association wants us to eat less salt, but it, it doesn't make any sense when we look at our history. Also, there's like there's a Korean paradox where hmm. South Korea eats 4,000 milligrams of salt or something per day, yeah. and they have the least heart attacks, least hypertension. Hmm. So it, it's, it's totally not founded in the history of salt or just health. Like, it doesn't make any sense, really. Um, so... I, okay, personally, I don't eat salt. I I, I oh. haven't touched. I haven't. Yeah, really? I, I haven't. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. eat salt either. Yeah, I haven't yeah. had salt in three months. I haven't touched okay. salt in three months. In like concordance with that decision to stop using salt, I stopped cooking my meat a lot. So I started eating much less cooked meat. Right. And I think that that allows you to basically retain more antioxidants, more nutrition. And therefore, your requirement for salt is somehow less. The exact mechanism by which that works, I don't know, but I think it makes sense. And the reason why I think it makes a lot of sense 
is because we didn't eat salt until about 5,000 years ago, meaning we can't, we don't require it. So there's, it's not possible that, that we have a requirement for uh, exogenous sodium outside of the meat. Mm. So I, I kind of thought about this. I was like, okay, I want to be more ancestral. I want to be the more naturally, right? Like yeah. do all these more natural things. So I probably don't eat salt. And that, that's what I found. Um, people who cook their meat more probably want, like probably want, salt more have more of a craving for it mm -hmm. i don't i don't personally but I, I don't think it's a i don't dissuade people from eating salt i don't think it's necessary but i don't think it's terrible either mm -hmm. like it's a it's a rock though so it kind of worries me like it's literally a rock but <laughs> just just from the evidence there's no reason there's nothing really pointing to it being that harmful mm, that's fascinating because right now i've been carnivore almost four years now i've only ever met just a handful of carnivores who say they thrive and they feel great with zero salt and i connected with you know the bear stanley owsley oh yes. yeah wait, wait you you connected with him i thought he's no dead, no no. Right? i didn't connect with oh, him personally. oh. oh <laughs> i connected okay. with his words in okay. his book so in his book he like literally preached no salt and i was like wait a minute so i'm not the only one who feels crazy because i was like am i an anomaly because i feel my absolute best without any salt and this is not to say to those watching that you should cut out salt to feel better. It's a very personal thing I've I've started to learn with maybe where you are in your carnivore journey. How raw are you eating your meats? Because yeah. I feel like the more raw, the more alive those electrolytes and minerals are. And since I mentioned the bear Owsley Stanley, this is just an excerpt from his book, which I have linked down below in the description box about his thoughts on salt. So as you can see, he's not a fan of salt. You can read why he doesn't like salt, why he personally doesn't eat salt. And I would love to know your thoughts on salt. Do you rely heavily on salts or do you tend to feel a little bit better with less salt? Drop it down below in the comments. And I had a phase where I was eating so much raw organs too, which I think you're doing right now. Yeah, I, 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 I eat like raw steaks too. Like You're like I, raw I, carnivore, huh? yeah pretty yeah, much yeah so that that to me explains a lot why you don't need any salt to feel great but anyway salt is a very personal thing it takes a lot of experimenting and troubleshooting we'll go on to the next this one is really popular saturated fat will clog your arteries and give you heart attacks oh no okay <laughs> so so here's the theory the theory is that saturated fat is bad because it raises your so-called bad cholesterol or your ldl which is basically what distributes cholesterol to the tissues of the body. Cholesterol mm -hmm. is absolutely essential. So yes. when we say that saturated fat raises LDL, correct. It absolutely does. The more saturated fat you eat, in theory, like the, the higher your LDL goes. Mm -hmm. That's true. So the question is, is LDL really that bad? No, it's not. LDL is extremely protective. LDL is essential. And the reason why LDL is essential is because, as I said, it makes perfect sense that the thing that's distributing cholesterol, which is essential for life, is also good mm -hmm. so there's also like i instead of just saying that there's like actual studies like very very good studies mm -hmm. showing that inflammation is the cause of heart disease not cholesterol and they've also done randomized control trials where they reduce inflammation without lowering cholesterol mm -hmm. right and what happens is your heart disease uh your risk of a cardiovascular event is cut or like there's just so much evidence that high LDL doesn't cause heart disease. And the sugar industry for so long has been trying to pinpoint cholesterol, LDL as the culprit. So they can so like they can promote more sugar. And, and they've paid off so many people. Um, I want I want to deep dive into the history of sugar companies fighting against, you know, meat, big meat. And um, mm. and another thing, yeah, they've just done studies where lowering cholesterol doesn't doesn't reduce risk like th that right there is is pure proof um there's also really good evidence that um like this is not even evidence it's, it's just people with the lowest ldl have the highest risk of, of heart attacks mm. interestingly enough yeah um because ldl is very important um mm -hmm. and then in addition to that just just focusing on this point of ldl there's an association between low LDL concentration and suicide. There's an association between low LDL and, and bipolar disorder, association between low LDL and antisocial behavior, premature death, um, parasuicide, like, mm. in, like all these things are, in, are associated with low LDL. Not and, and why is this the case? Well, you're not eating enough fat. Like you don't eat saturated fat and your brain is messed up. Your brain doesn't work right. So, you know, um, to say that, so so here's the problem. Here's why I think those those 
several points I just mentioned are relevant. Yeah. Because to say that low LDL is best for humans, right? It's the best for longevity, but it's most likely to put us in a state where we commit suicide or where we engage in activities that are completely uh, terrible for our health. Mm hmm seems to make it, it doesn't make sense logically how could lowering ldl which puts us at risk for all these horrible things that i mentioned being mentally ill being mentally insane yep. be this be the very thing that allows us to live a long time right. I, don't, I don't i don't think i don't think that makes sense makes and plus sense. we know plus we know what saturated fat does we know that the brain we know that there's nutrients and fat soluble vitamins that we need that are essential they're fat soluble they're they, we need them mm. so there's a whole bunch of reasons also our consumption of saturated fat has gone down. We eat less animal fat, less mm -hmm. animal products in general, and we have more heart disease. So how could it be? It's like this, but like, yeah, it, it, it's just, it's an in, it's completely inversely associated. Yes. Um. Just yeah, just totally unfounded. There's so many ways to go about that, but yes, that yeah. was that was a couple. Yeah. I know we can unpack this for hours and hours, but yeah. I'll link. Yeah, I'll link some studies that I recently shared in past interviews, showing proof that there's no correlation with uh, low LDL and longer lifespan. There is no correlation. So I'll put the studies in the description box. But what do you think of instead? By the way, did you get your blood tested recently? I need to do that. Uh, okay. Uh, I would be yeah. very curious to know your numbers, but I wouldn't, you know, be concerned at all because with the trends, carnivore diet, with enough time, your LDL will go up. But that's not a concern because what actually matters is the triglycerides and the HDL. So share what you know about those numbers. Yeah, it's a, it's the triglycerides to HDL ratio that that's like the biggest risk factor. It's one of the biggest risk factors. It's that ratio um that like puts you at risk for heart disease and yet somehow the insurance companies are like raising your rates dramatically for life right. insurance if you have a high ldl like it's crazy it's really messed up yeah mm -hmm. here's a great paragraph stating how to find your triglycerides to hdl ratio it is so important to see how healthy your heart is just take your triglyceride number and divide it by your hdl number ideally you want it to be as close to one as possible anything above three indicates significant risk of heart attack i've linked this resource to down below in the description box. Oh, I was going to ask you, what are your favorite sources of fat as a carnivore? I like raw butter. Oh, raw butter. So you can find raw, raw butter. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, in LA, we have it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. It tastes. It's. It's really good. Like it tastes different. It tastes cleaner almost. I also like. I also like eating raw fat. Oh, so like okay. like just just like raw yeah. raw animal fat instead of. I mean, cook, cooked was fine. It gave me some stomach problems when I just, like would just fry like literally pieces of fat. Yeah, I, I didn't feel too good. I I just like the raw fat much better. Yeah, yeah. And then um, cooked butter is fine. I also like egg yolks. So I like I, I've been doing this thing lately where I'll just like ten egg yolks in a cup and just do it. Go 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 do a workout. Oh, and wow. it just feels so good. Like all the cholesterol feels so good. It's like you're. It's just pure power. Wow. Um, Do yeah. you also eat the egg white raw or you take it out? Um, I, I give them to like my family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it's kind of like a pre-workout for before working out, huh? That's a great Yeah, it, all, it, also, yeah. it also gives me crazy brain power. Nice. So I could just, I, I eat 10, I eat 10 egg yolks, I'm gone. I could go. Like I could wow. just, yeah. Yeah, That's it's fantastic. great. Awesome. Well, if you guys want to check out raw butter, um, I used to live in LA and I would always get the brand raw farm. I think that's, that's what, what I have. Get. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's that sprouts. Yeah. It is the best butter I have ever tasted. And it makes me feel fantastic. Eating meat makes you smell bad and sweaty. Mm. Okay. So I could actually bring in a little story for this. So yeah. I, um, I, I, uh, so I'm, I go to UCLA now and what I've been doing is not, I don't go to the dining hall very often, but every week or so they have lamb chops, oh. which are great. Um, yeah, it's great. And the problem is they cook them in like pepper, uh, no, no, no seed oils. Uh, they, they use actually olive oil, but, or extra virgin olive oil, but they do pepper, cayenne, um, like different things, turmeric, I think like just different spice mix. And I never smell bad, right? I never use deodorant. I, don't use anything like that. No body wash, nothing. I smell totally fine all the time. Mm. But, but, but here's what happens when I eat that thing. Mm. The next morning, 
I don't, I, I, I like smell like I don't smell good. I need a shower. Wow. And I never, it's never like that for me. It's, it's never like that. I never need to do that unless I eat plants. Mm. Same thing with onion has that effect so powerfully. It's, it's you, it's plants that make us smell bad. It really is plants, like especially vegetables, less, less so fruit, more yeah. vegetables. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really don't smell bad ever unless I right. eat plants. Yes. And so it's, um, it, you know, it, it makes so much sense too that a natural human diet would, would allow us to smell good, mm -hmm. right? It makes perfect sense because think about it in nature, we're not going around smelling like crap, repulsing everyone else, mm -hmm. right? We're, it, we, it makes sense that we eat our natural diet. We smell good. We smell fine. Mm -hmm. And deviating from that will cause some problems. Eating plants that don't want to be eaten, that have severe defense mechanisms ingrained within them. Yeah, would would make us call, smell bad. They want us to be infertile. Plants want to not allow us to reproduce, so they make us smell bad. So we repel others. Exactly. Sure, it makes it makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah. I also want to add, in addition to carnivores not smelling as bad, which in turn makes you need less of those hygiene products like deodorant, body wash, shampoo our senses become heightened. I don't know if you have experienced this, but you can now smell clearer. You can even taste more sharply. For myself, I am very sensitive to fragrances and smells now. Oh, it's a good point. I did yeah. not even realize that that was happening. Okay. My roommates love to use these nasty, this, these disgusting sprays, yes. um, Clorox stuff, like spraying it in the air. And I, it, it really grosses me out. It makes me not want to be there, like be yeah. there as little as I can. And I was never sensitive to that. I guess I'm more sensitive to it now, exactly. which makes sense. Yeah, I don't really use any of that stuff. And when I when I smell it, it's just it's really bad. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a good. I never realized that. Yeah, right. It it literally nauseates me and gives me a headache now. So it just it's both sides. We start getting more heightened, but also we are less stinky. So that myth is completely false. Speaking of cutting down on products and usage of hygiene products in general, I really think that it's wise to invest in things that will give us long-term health, long-term protection. If you are using screens all day long, if your career involves sitting in front of a computer screen hours on end, I highly recommend that you guys invest in a pair of high quality blue blocker glasses. I use this pair from Bond Charge every single day to protect my eyes from blue light. Our eyes are exposed to blue light when we look at our phone screens, when we're on laptops, iPads, even watching TV. And it prevents our body from producing melatonin, especially at night, when it's time to unwind and have a good deep sleep. And blue light blockers protect our eyes from blue light affecting our melatonin production. I also find when I'm wearing these glasses when editing in front of my laptop, my eyes do not feel as strained and dry. This one I'm wearing right now is the Magnum Design computer glasses. This yellow one provides a level up of protection. So I like to wear this yellow one when I'm editing and doing hours and hours on end of computer work. And I wear this, it also looks quite fashionable. And I wear this clear one when I'm hosting meetings. If you guys would like to check up on charge and get a nice pair of blue blockers for yourself click the link down below in the description box we'll move on to the next eating too much protein will damage your kidneys i've heard i've heard this one before but there's just like no evidence for it like that's mm -hmm. the problem mm -hmm. um I, I looked into this very briefly and there's just studies showing that high protein diets don't negatively affect kidney function mm -hmm. so it's like um like a, a lot of a lot of what these ridiculous claims are founded on is just epidemiology where they take groups that eat a lot of animal protein and then they basically figure out like uh, extrapolate all their health problems um so so they figure out what their health problems are and then relate it to the meat eating when it's they're doing a million other different things like they're eating bread yeah. they're doing alcohol they're doing all that stuff mm -hmm. so it's an it's another theory that was just made um i don't know what the theory stems from but i do know that i've looked at studies and changes in kidney function don't differ between healthy adults eating lots of protein and not eating lots of protein. It, it's just a myth that um, isn't grounded in science. It's really not. Let us know what you think of that myth, but also all of the other myths that we debunked. Um, those are all the myths I will cover today with you, Joey. I would love to bring him back for part two, part three, more videos for us to collaborate on. Let us know what other topics you'd like us to discuss. But I have two closing questions because I know you have now come across vegans. 
Oh, the yes, vegan haters, have. right? The vegan trolls. And I would love to know what, firstly, your thoughts on all of this heavy promoting on the vegan diet, vegan alternatives. What are your thoughts on all of this? So when I'm thinking about veganism, I have one really big question that comes to mind yeah. by design or by chance. And that, that, that and that, that's the big question for me. That's what I've tr been trying to figure out. Is this by design? Is this orchestrated by some larger force that wants us to be sick and unhealthy and stuff? Mm. Or was it just out of a sheer motivation for money that in turn mm. has caused people to adopt more plant-based diets? Mm. And what I'm leaning towards now, it's been changing. And I don't know if I'm setting anything, but I think it's the former. Like, I think it's that there's uh, some people behind it. And the more I sort of look into this, talk to professionals the more I become convinced of that mm -hmm. and so my thoughts on vegan are, veganism are that it's by design because it, it would be totally sensical make tons of sense if it was by design if they were trying to control a population that's the best way to do it I'm gonna give myself a little uh promotion right now but yes, I, 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 I I I have a, I have a video that everyone should watch yes it's it's called um it's a uh, it's like carnivory versus veganism um yeah. like resolved and it's basically this guy who Varys Ahmad who talks about completely talks about all the whole the whole vegan agenda talks about uh just all that stuff it's a three hour long interview but it's it's phenomenal it's my one of my favorite talks ever so yeah it's just um I, I think it's all by design and it's really concerning to me there's also a lot of other concerns with it like mm -hmm. in the United States the most rapidly growing population that's adopting vegan diets is a black population which is very concerning it's like 10 percent wow. of them identify as vegans at this point it's really bad huh. and um it's just it's uh th th it's very concerning that's why i devote a lot of my efforts and my channel towards completely destroying the vegan agenda it's 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 really harming people it's really harming the world and it's so very appreciated, Joey, your hard work explaining all of this, how all of this is absolute insanity. Uh, so I've linked the specific video down below in the description box. And last question, a nice little fun question. What is the craziest encounter or encounters that you've had with vegan trolls? It's actually it's actually good that we're doing this because yeah. just a couple of days ago, I had an interesting encounter. Oh. Um, I was in a grocery store and I was lots of meat, right? Oh, wow. And we're in. Uh, I was in Sprouts. It's pretty understaffed, so there's a big, big line in, in each section. And so we're, I'm, at, I'm in line, and there's a woman behind me with a ton of like green leaves and like garbage yeah. like that. Just like only plants, a whole cart full of plants. Yeah. So she's vegan, whatever. I, I don't even carry carts around because of meat. I just have like a couple of handfuls of just yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, so I, I, I had my stuff, and I, she was giving me like eyeing me. I could tell, but. You know, this happens every time, right? Everyone's wow. plant based. Mm. So, so I'm I, I check out my stuff, and I walk out of the grocery store with my stuff. And as she's checking out, she yells, "Wait!" Like as I'm walking out of the store. Uh oh. <laughs> um, and like everyone looks because it's a, it was a pretty quiet store that day. I mean, there was people in there, but it was quiet, yeah. and everyone just looks. <laughs> and then we walk outside, and she starts lecturing me on on, <laughs> on like all about me and how it's so bad. <sighs> And the, the, that's why I think it's good that we had this because it's actually really funny that it had that it's such a coincidence because it literally just happened. Um, but it, it was so funny. She's like screaming, um, like cursed at me as I walked away. Like it's really funny. What um, was she saying specifically? Like you're gonna you're gonna get sick or what? No, it was it was um it was so so the health came as as an afterthought. It was okay. more the environment stuff, which oh. I happily said I was like, well, you're eating plants that are exported from like um uh, ecuador <laughs> like like you like you, you had like all, all you all, you you're your, your bananas came from like across the world so oh so, so so like, what do you think you're doing for the environment my beef came from california <laughs> so so like what are you saying um and she's like she was just like oh Yo, you don't know what you're talking about how about carbon emissions and oh, you're, you're buying plane you're like Oh no! It, it was it was just it was just ridiculous. You can't really argue. It's easier to win an argument against someone who's smart than someone who's a complete moron. Exactly. So like so it's very diff. It was very difficult to yeah. um converse with her. Wow. Uh, so more vegan trolls. Do you know who yeah. Durian Rider is? Of oh my gosh, his girlfriend. I don't know if they're still together. Freely the banana girl is the reason why I went vegan. Okay. Yeah. So yes, so I he, know. <laughs> okay so he's not with her anymore he's with some other girl that he turned oh, really? into a, a, he turned another girl into a fruitarian um and she lives with them now but so yesterday i debated 
the Adrian Rider. And I'm going to no post that. Way. She was, said yes to you? Wow. Yeah, 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 we did it. And we're going to... I'm telling you, if you if you have an extra hour to spare, this yeah. is the most entertaining hour you might you might ever have because oh it was it was so entertaining. Like this guy is a is an absolute imbecile. Oh, really? He doesn't know he doesn't know he doesn't know anything about anything. He's just wow. It, it, it was um it was really crazy. Um, a lot of them are just very very brain dead at this point. Um, so, not, yeah. Since you talked to Durian Ryder yourself, because he was one of the most influential vegans alongside Freely, what do you think? Like, what did they do to convince so many people? What were their strong suits? How did they convince so many people? So, so what Durian Ryder does is so he's very formidable. Like, he's very confident. Okay. And and he's very um. Oh, like how do you describe it? Like. Some people are just like, I mean, he's kind of like, he has some similar qualities to me. Like he's very believes what he says, <laughs> but <laughs> like he, um, like yeah. I, I, I don't want to say that, but he, he kind of does. And, sure. um, and the way he is, is, uh, he's like intimidating kind of. So, mm -hmm. but, but, but the, but the way he gives validity to his program, to his high sugar, like adding sugar to water, drinking that all day diet mm -hmm. is that he says, well, I'm a runner and I run a 447 mile and. I run a two two twenty five marathon and I do all this cycling, um, and I'm like this healthy and I have the hottest girlfriend and I'm rich. Wow! And like like like, like, like that's really what he says. Yeah. Um. All that yeah. stuff. He takes testosterone, so he's very big, or like kind of big. Okay. He he looks he's like he's forty five, but he looks like he's sixty five. So oh, that that's not that's not really going good for him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he just he just built up a name, got people on his program. Yeah. Free, Freely's um like really doing bad. Have you have you noticed? I have not caught up with any of them, but it's wow. Freely is really, really doing bad. Like mm -hmm. um really disintegrating. Yeah, that's really bad. Yeah, sooner or later, uh vegan, the vegan diet will, you know, bite you in the butt. It did for me at year four, but yet I was so stubborn and closed minded that I was like, no, I'm gonna keep pushing because it's gonna get better. I lost my period. It's supposed to happen. That means I'm healthy, you know. It, it is it means you're detoxing, right? <laughs> Yes, detoxing. I'm pure. I'm clean. It is brainwashing. Freely and Dream Rider, they they tell everyone that men should get vasectomies and oh. um women what and it's like it's good if like women lose their periods. Like they're they're totally for a depopulation. Um uh, no no more kids. Yeah. Freely said in a video, she's like, it, or no, Dream Rider said if I were president, all men would get vasectomies. It's like these people have lost their minds. They they yeah. they they, to they totally lost their minds. They have. Um yeah, yeah and, and uh yeah, so I uh, during my just looked like an absolute fool when we when we talked but okay good i i can't wait to watch that video and yeah, again, yeah, yeah. link down below because i think it'll be out by the time i post this video anyway so wow did we cover some great topics did you guys enjoy it do you have any other topic requests what are your thoughts on everything we discussed comment it down below we would love to know joey take a minute share with everyone where they can find you any exciting announcements you want to share with us oh yeah so you can find me carnivore camaraderie on youtube carnivore underscore camaraderie on instagram and carnivore .com for consults or just checking out my website stuff like that um and by the time this video is out we will have a clothing line so the first carnivore clothing line to just put out really like good clothes like clothes that people actually like and I love it. Yeah, that, that's, I'm very excited about that. Yeah. All right. Connect with Joey with links down below. Thank you so much for your time, Joey. Sure. Thanks for having me. Thank you all so much for watching to the very end. I hope you guys found this video helpful and entertaining. I absolutely loved connecting with Joey on all of these different topics, sharing our stories and experiences. And if you guys are looking for a community for extra support, 24 seven accountability and expert guidance from carnivore coaches and carnivore doctors, come join the steak and butter gang. You can hop on seven to eight hours of weekly live Zoom calls to get the answers you need, the troubleshooting support and guidance that you need to continue on your carnivore journeys and reach your goals. Just go to svgmeetup.com to join the community and to hop on all the live Zoom calls. If you guys would like to connect with me personally, I am on Instagram every single day posting stories of what I'm up to, what I'm eating, what I'm learning, and I love posting reels with concise pro hacks and tips for the carnivore diet. You can find me at Steak and Butter Gal on Instagram and on Nunu for polls. If you want to take a big part in what type of content 
content videos guests I invite on for my channel. You guys can check me out there. I love posting polls for your guys' help and opinion on videos, content decisions regarding my YouTube and Instagram pages. Everything is linked down below in the description box. I hope you all have a wonderful Gouda Meat Fuel day and I will see you in my next video. SVG out.